so you said nibbana is like a concept can it be that you know the, all the seven stages that has been described purification of virtue purification of mind and uh, purification of view purification of overcoming doubt and right. then you know the purification by knowledge and vision yeah. of what is the path what is not the path of the way and purification by knowledge and vision that the holy life is lived can all of it be you know uh, like how you said the automobile is not just one thing the whole automobile is a lot of parts like that right. can nibbana be all of these no no <laughs> this is what's wonderful these things take you to the door to right. enter these things have now become in you yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. if we look at each one of them look at each one of them i did this earlier because i was doing the same thing you're doing let's look at each one of them to purification of virtue is what it's a giving up giving up giving up right purification of mind giving up the hindrances abandonment right purification of view giving up me and taking everything uh, and, per, and let the next one overcoming doubt doubt was grabbing you grabbing you disturbing you it's a giving up abandonment right knowledge and vision of what the path is and what the path is not what is the path is not doing anything and giving up to get there to get to the brink of going over the way i show you in the chart when i show you the waterfall picture yes. Yes. has anybody here not seen the waterfall picture <laughs> anybody has not seen it okay the waterfall is just the eight it's just the eight levels that you're going through to fall over into the ninth one so if we were to look at it when, what we're talking about is giving, giving up, giving up. Now, watch what even happens when we talk about the waterfall. Um, we do it this way. We start with a pond, and then it goes like this, and we say it's springtime, and the rains are coming, and we draw this funny little thing like this, okay? Three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine. And we put cessation down here. And then what happens is you come out, you see the parts of the dependent origination turning back on when you come back up. And then here is where Nibbana is here. It's like that. That's like a star, it's a big explosion. This is Nibbana here. So this is a, and number one, it's an experience. It's an experience. We have books today from very well-trained monks, okay? Telling us that it's reaching the city of Nibbana. And we have another one, the country of Nibbana, the place, you know, out here of Nibbana. They ha haven't actually had, they went through the training and looked through the, the Sudimaga and came out with this thing, we're going to Nibbana. So again, these people are caught with the idea, look at all this, how hard we have to work and know all this, and then we have to keep it on us to get there, like it's parts of the car. But what happens is up here, okay, this is full of water and when this gets full of water it begins to move down because it goes by gravity and this is the first jhana second jhana third jhana fourth jhana and then you have the fourth jhana sections of infinite space infinite consciousness nothingness and the little guy who wants the big name neither perception nor non-perception big shot okay <laughs> And then you have cessation. Here's cessation. Now, in the old school, remember I told you guys before, in the old school, it goes like this. 
And these four slide over and they are subsections of the fourth jhana. And these are mental states here. And the other states are um, rupa. They are rupa, uh, um, the rupa states and the arupa states. So these are mental, meaning there's no body. These are arupa states. And these are the rupa jhanas, okay? And it just means you have your body for most of this, but right about here, um, you know, right about here is where you lose your body. You start losing it, right? At the third jhana, that's the degree where you start to lose if the feeling in the body. Some in, in one and two, you kind of fly through them, not you're going through them very pretty fast. You have to listen. If you, if you haven't done it, if you're listening now, you go to the YouTube and you find Vimala Ramsey, Bhante Vimala Ramsey, and find uh, Majima Nikaya number 111, and you listen to the description of these levels and what is happening to you as you go through these levels so that you, before you go on the trip, this is not illegal, uh, you at home, you would call the AAA instead of calling the AAA. What we did was we went to MN uh, 111. AAA would give you a map, tell you what you're going to see on the way and what's going to happen so you'd know in advance how long it's going to take you to get from the East Coast to the West Coast in the United States. Well, this one is the Anupada, Anupada Sutta. And and this is the one that describes Sariputta's practice, which is what we're doing. We're trying to see, we were trying, we were, we were trying to see in the beginning what if we if we follow these directions very carefully without changing anything, would it work? That's all we were doing. Same thing you guys are doing, testing, testing. But our game was let's go back to the text themselves. Anything we're doing that has to do with the commentary, let it go just to see what would happen because they weren't written yet for two or three hundred years until he uh, after he was gone. So let's just go back to the lessons he taught the monks, make friends with them. We, when we listened to him talk about this at first, we thought it would be very hard, okay? But it's no harder than going to study Shakespeare and getting used to listen to Shakespeare. If you listened to me teach this one tonight and read it to you, it wasn't that hard to listen to it. You just need to get used to the way that the what the suttas are set up. And when you when you think about how they're how are they set up, you know, they're set up like this. Uh, according to the four noble truths, these suttas are all set up this way. And so the first thing you're going to hear about is that somebody's suffering. Okay, and they're coming to the Buddha. And then he's then he's going to question where's the cause? And he's going to point that out. And then he's going to show where a cessation can happen. We saw this in this one. Okay. And then he's going to show you the way to the cessation. Okay, to the cessation. That's what he's going to do. And almost all the suttas in the Majjhima Nikaya, the ones that are about the meditation, they're all set up this way. And so you get suffering and cause and cessation, or you get suffering and cessation, or you just hear about cessation. And the big thing to remember in Buddhism is, did the Buddha give you a gift? Did he, did he protect and preserve a gift for you? Okay, what was the gift? We can we go the Four Noble Truths. Yeah, okay, but this is the one I want to hear about. I want to hear about this one. I want to hear about this one. That was the one that he gave you, cessation of suffering. If you listen to his exact, precise instructions and just do it until you can get the results that are described in the same sutta you're looking at, and that's what you're trying to do. The results are there. And believe me, they're pretty accurate. It's pretty shocking. They are pretty accurate, okay? So test it until you get to that point, okay? Now, this one, we're showing you the water. It comes down into when it gets, the springtime gets here and the water comes over. That's how the first jhana happens. And once you have the joy arise in the first jhana, you're working in the first jhana and you just relax and keep watching. This is filling up. Now, what are these little things? Well, if you go and hike and you get to a waterfall, if you examine it, 
wherever the water's coming down, there is a pothole underneath the waterfall. There is a pothole. And that's this piece right here. That's the pothole. And it's coming down from the water, pounding it. And the second one is not the second waterfall. It doesn't happen until what? Until this stuff goes over after it fills up. That's how you're going through the jhanas. How fast you go through is how well can you abandon anything that comes up and believe that you just has nothing for you and just leave it alone and smile at it and keep going. So how fast can you decide to do that and really believe these rules that he gave us, these laws that he taught us about it? Okay, and then this one rolls over and it falls in here. By then, you're going to lose some feeling in your hands and in your feet, then your legs and then your arms. Eventually, your whole torso will disappear. And that's where you're going down now into the fourth jhana, right? Okay. And then things happen down here. But I'm telling you, go for yourself and see Arupa jhana, MN111, okay? So this is how the waterfall works. And it just keeps doing this. It keeps going like this and filling up. And as long as you're abandoning things, this is, this is the conditional thing. As long as you're abandoning things and you're letting go and just watching what's happening inside and you keep smiling and relaxing your head. What's so important about my head? Your head is the command center. It's the command center for your whole body. You want to relax sometime, relax your head. Let go of all your thoughts. Just be very calm and just let them fall out your ears and fall out everywhere <laughs> and just fall out on the pillow and go away for the night. If you want to practice that's really silly, when you come home and if you have a sweater or you have a, a shawl, make sure you have a shawl in the car. You put it on, you walk in the house, you take the shawl off, you hang it on a hook. Inside the shawl are all the thoughts you had, all the worries you had, everything. Hang it on the hook by the door, then go in the house for the evening. Don't think about anything. Just smile. Oh, I got to tell you what happened today. Oh my gosh. And you're there. Yeah, what happened? Okay, tell me. It's fine. <laughs> oh, is that right? The washing machine leaked on the floor and I got to fix the faucets in the downstairs. Okay, fine. It'll take a little time, but you know, Anicca. <laughs> Always make yourself a flag, put it on the wall. Anicca. That's the one. People tell me now I'm promoting a Nietzsche. I think I'm going to make some flags a Nietzsche and I'm going to sell them to raise money for this temple. <laughs> so I can, you know, stay here. You know, we send the little flags and then it goes over when it falls down. It's like, it's more like this when it falls down. Let's show you. It's more like, here we go, right here. Something happens right here. And it's like you hit a wall. And, but it really turns off perception, thoughts, and consciousness, perception, feeling, consciousness, off. It's just off. And where it's falling to is cessation. And then what happens, it's very short the first time it happens. And when it comes back on also, it seems like it's pretty fast the first time it comes on, unless you've been very relaxed at giving away, giving away. That's the measuring stick. How fast does this happen? How fast does this part happen down here? How far does this happen fast the first time with turning off and turning back on is directly proportional to how were you letting things abandon, just abandon this, abandon everything, abandon it, let them go, let them go, let them go. If you're doing that all the way through this path, then this is going to get, the next time when you continue to work, it's going to be there. What the, the shut off will happen the same way. The drop off, but coming back on will be clearer and clearer. The first time you might not notice anything, the, but most people notice something, you know? And the second time you see these just as dots. And then the third time, maybe they're like little dashes like that when they come back on. And eventually they're pretty clear when they're coming back on because you understand what's happening and you're not, you're, you're not shocked. You know what's happening, you're turning back on and you're confident nothing's gonna happen to you. 
So the more often that you do this, eventually you learn how to sit in cessation and then come out. But the cessation you're sitting in for longer periods of time is a little bit different than this, this blackout. It's not a blackout. I want to point this out. A blackout is different. This one is turning off. A blackout is a blackout and come back. That's what we're talking about when we're trying to show you what's happening as we're going down the path, okay?